I'm Ian Dainty, the CEO of Maximize Business Marketing. And today I want to speak to you about one of the biggest challenges for B2B sales growth. And that subject is, what percentage of revenue should B2B companies spend on marketing and sales? This is a great question and one that many B2B companies struggle with. Now, let's look at the marketing budgets of two of the most successful B2B companies in the past 40 years. These two companies are IBM and Microsoft. First of all, nobody has ever accused either of these two companies of having the best technology. And yet both of them have survived through many recessions to become two of the most successful companies in history. I remember when I was with IBM, we had many competitors, yet IBM stood head and shoulders above all of them because of their superior marketing and sales teams. And both of these companies had technology that was good enough and, and not necessarily the most advanced, but what they both had and still have are products and services that meet the needs of their current customers and marketplace. Their technology works well enough to meet these needs. And yet, ironically, both have been sued by the U.S. government for predatory and mon monopolistic business practices. Silly. And when Steve Jobs was alive, Apple also fit into this category, and to this day they still do. But a few people are predicting Apple's downfall now, too. Anyway, we'll have to see. It's interesting to note that all of these companies are technology companies. And where there has been exponential growth and decline of thousands of other technology companies, they've survived. It should also be noted that IBM has gained much of its revenue from services over the past 10 to 15 years. But a lot of that service revenue is helping their clients use technology better. So what did these three companies spend on marketing and sales? It was difficult to find what Apple spends on marketing and sales because of all of their internal salaries are put into the same bucket in their financial reporting. However, IBM and Microsoft split their marketing and sales expenses into one expense item. Both of these companies spend between 21 and 23 percent of revenue every year on marketing sales. Let me repeat that. Both of these companies spend between 21 and 23 percent of total revenue every year between marketing and sales. Now paradoxically, they spend only about 15% of revenue on research and development. This means they spend 50% more on revenue, I'm oh, sorry, of revenue on marketing and sales than they do on R&D. Apple spends about 30% of revenue on marketing, sales, and administration expenses, but also about 15% on R&D. What does your company spend in that ratio on marketing and sales? So why would three of the most successful technology companies in history spend 50% more on marketing and sales than on R&D? Because they know that you really don't have to have the best technology to succeed. And there's a lot of uh, technology graveyards around to prove that. You must, however, have the best marketing and sales. By marketing here, I mean it the way Peter Drexler defines it, as anything that brings in sales which includes Marcom, marketing communications, sales, and customer service. Now, Steve Jobs, as you know, was one of the greatest marketers slash salesperson that ever lived. When I joined IBM Canada in the mid-1970s, they put me and several hundred other new recruits through a nine-month training program with about 25 people in each class. They trained us for three basic categories. Number one, how computers work. Number two, general business knowledge, like finance, operations, etc. And three, marketing and sales. And by far, by far, the most time was spent on marketing and sales, probably 70% of that nine-month training program, about how to best sell their products and services, IBM's products and services, with all kinds of role plays for selling to clients. Now, selling and marketing were a bit different back then, but only because there are more tools for sales and marketing now. Selling to B2B people has not really changed. However, I want you to understand my point. IBM knew that the greatest way to grow their business was to produce the best marketing, marketer, sorry, and salespeople any company could have. And IBM made sure you were one of the best marketing salespeople, or you didn't last very long with them. And a number of people dropped out. IBM doesn't train like that anymore. And in fact, 
I assume because of cost. And I haven't found any technology companies that train their sales and marketers at all anymore. Never mind like that. And haven't for about the last 30 years. And yet, when technology people hire sales and marketing com marketers, technology companies hire sales and marketers, they expect these people to be fully trained. What a paradox. So what does your company spend on marketing and sales? You need to be the best B2B marketing slash sales company in your marketplace to succeed in today's internet world. You need to spend at least 15% of your revenues on marketing and sales and probably over 20% of revenues to really grow. If you do not spend at least 15% of revenues on marketing and sales, and then your company will have a very difficult time, not just growing, but even surviving. If your company is not a major player in your marketplace, because either you're a new company or you still need to establish yourself, then I recommend spending closer to 40% of revenues on marketing and sales. That's right. So take a very close look at how fast you want to grow and spend accordingly. And if your sales and marketing people are struggling, then ensure they get the proper training and coaching to make your company grow. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please read the articles on my website to get a greater understanding of what you need to do to grow your business through better B2B sales and marketing. Thanks a lot. Until next time.